My guests today are director Maria Gobetti, the director of the incredible film Pie in the Sky, and she has directed over 80 plays, including Mild Friends by Norman Sachs and Mel Mandel. And Maria is the director of the Gobetti Ormany Acting Studio, coaches at various major studios, and teaches at the New York Film Academy. She has worked as both director and coach at Hanna-Barbera, a member of the Directors Guild of America. She has directed for Disney, where she also coached the new Mickey Mouse Club show. And Maria is a member of Women in Film and Women in Theater. And Eric Ron, the producer of the acclaimed feature film Pie in the Sky, has success in writing and producing multiple award-winning shorts and a play showcased at the Victory Theater and collaborating with Jay Leno's Garage on the Hot Wheels Legends Tour. Today, they are here to discuss their brilliant film, Pie in the Sky, starring Kay Callan and Laurie O'Brien. And so without further ado, let's welcome film and theater director Maria Gobetti and producer Eric Rond of Pie in the Sky feature film to the show. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're very well. Well, where did the story of Pie in the Sky come from? Well, uh, it was written by Lawrence Thielen, and he uh, sent it to us at the Victory Theater. And I just really liked it. So we did it as a play. And then Eric came in to film it and went, I want to do this as a, a film. And he wanted to dedicate it to his grandparents. And I went, Wow. So Tom and I, you know, discussed it with Eric. I've known Eric forever. It seems like, doesn't it, Eric? And we yes, get along yeah. really, really well. And um, it was my first attempt at a one camera shoot, which was terrifying. I said, this is not going to work. It's not going to work. And Eric kept saying, it's going to work. It's going to work. And Tom said, it's going to work. And our AD, who was wonderful. And, um, and it worked. So... <laughs> And I got all the editing I wanted. Eric was incredible from beginning to end. We had wonderful uh, consensus. We really collaborate well together. We have creative fights that are excellent. And uh, I think it, it worked out very well for me anyway. I liked, I liked working with him very much. Well, Eric, why did you like this story so much? Well, I saw this play at the Victory Theater with my grandparents. And it, it, it reminds me of them and it really makes me feel close to them. And especially it gives me that memory of my grandfather going uh, twice in a row to get pie, to get extra pie, because at the end of the play, you get to eat the pie that they actually bake. <laughs> so for me, it was really, it's a, it's a war, heartwarming film and memory that I had for this uh, play. Well, was this originally or is it still a one act play in the theater um yeah it's it's well we're not running it now but um eric converted it into a film script and um i think we're going to have a, a preview of it in the theater at one point because uh we're thinking of showing movies on off nights and so i know eric has that planned and and we'll make pie again. We made pie for the original script. And then you could just begin to smell the apples. And the audience really liked that. And grown men would come up and teary and tell me that it reminded them of their mother. And they wanted to, I mean, we only have one pie. So I'm giving them little pieces of pie. <laughs> and they loved it. My grandfather had to go twice. Yes, He was complaining about the portions, you know? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Well, you know, see, that's what I loved about this film because I was talking to Kay and and Laurie about it yesterday, and and the pie just being this uh, central figure in a way in this in this film, and the way that it was timed out, yeah, perfectly, where the pie is ready to go at the end. They both told me that even during the stage performances, the pie was always uh cooked correctly it was never overdone and never underdone so it seems like the performances were perfect every time they were <laughs> and the, and the smell started coming halfway through the play and that just the audience just went wild you know they had to have a piece and, 
what, what I did when one of the festivals, some of the festivals actually that I went to, I got a portable oven. So like that, I put it in the theater itself and the smell of the pie went through the whole theater. So it was really <laughs> successful in that way. And in the end, I had pie and given it to everyone. That's why I think we won so many awards for this film. Uh, oh, Eric, you're, yeah. you're a marketing genius. <laughs> I, I like to think of uh, what extra I can do for the film itself, for the film industry, because you have to today get the audience to come. And what better than pie smell and eating pie in the end of it? Well, I think you must be the first person, probably outside of Disney, that created smell a vision. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, even, who's when like I, even when I showed the film to my family, I baked the pie at our house so that they get that smell. It didn't work too well, but it was not bad. You know, it was I, I, I love that idea. But whose idea was it? No, was it Eric? Was it your idea? And I think Maria just said that, that it was your idea to take this stage show and, and convert it to a film? Yes, yes. Uh, during the pandemic, we were going around buying flour everywhere. And I was trying to think, how can I create? I wanted to create a film in one place. And then I remembered this play that I saw, The Victory. So I thought it would be the perfect time to maybe, not the perfect time, you know, with the pandemic and everything happening, but it would be contained in a closed space that we could all be safe in um, and work and create this into a film. Well, for you, uh, did you face any challenges to get this uh, made into a film? Yeah, so as Maria said, one of the interesting um, things that we decided to do was to actually make it into a one take, one shot film, which is also a very big risk because it gives it still that feeling of a play and not a film maybe. But because the writing is so perfect and, and you know, they're actually baking the pie as the film is going, I wanted to keep that feeling that you're, that there's no tricks here. And I know that we might have lost out on some close-ups. Maria would yell at me, Erica, what a close-up there. And we had to have like the camera guy holding the camera and shaking, you know, getting, getting a little bit closer. Um, but, uh, but I think we still got it to be a good film. And it does have that feeling of a film, which was very important to keep in it. Well, as I was, when I started watching the film, I think it was probably about... 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes into the film, I started noticing, I said, wait a minute. Did they film this with one camera? And was this a continuous take? Because I noticed the panning and the movement of the camera. And I saw no edit points whatsoever. And now Kay and Lori alluded to the fact that... Uh, the camera rig seemed to be, I guess, a little bit heavy for the for the camera operator. So were there like possibly three or four edits for the film? Yes, we had to, first of all, have the camera guy do some push-ups before the film. Uh, we sent him to CrossFit to work out, you know, to hold the, the camera. But there were some edits. And the fun part sometimes is, is to watch the film and maybe, you know, on the second or third time, to find those edits, you know, where is it actually? Where is it happening? I, I could, you know, I watched it all the way through. Of course, I would pause it. I would reverse it a bit because uh, I, was, I was looking at scenes. If there was something I thought that I had missed in dialogue, I went back, watched it. But it was done so seamlessly that me as an audience, I could not find the edit points which makes this film so brilliant as coming across to the audience as a one scene film, which to me is just a brilliant move. Well, that's our that, that is all the credit that all the credit goes really to Navid, the, the DP who came up with the idea how to do these edits and how to make them seamless. And to August, you know, the editor, it's really what I really like to say about this film is it has all the ingredients that we brought together and we made one great film all together. People that really love to create film. And if you take one piece out of it, the film would not be what it is and it would not look so good. If, if I don't know what the nutmeg does, 
but if it's not there, you know that you can feel it. You know, and that oh, really well, is yeah, everybody came here during the pandemic to do this. And it's so. Yeah, because even within amazing. the storyline, you have to follow the storyline because there's these little things within the dialogue and, and the actions of the actor that do show up later into the film. And so I just, I love the way that it builds. Now, Maria, as a director, for you, were there any challenges of moving from a theater setting to a film uh, with your expertise as a director? Well, it didn't turn out to be difficult. At the very first time we, first day we shot, and I saw the camera go whizzing past, I went, oh no! And uh, Naveed came down and said, it's going to work, it's going to work. I said, but it would, he said, we'll edit it, you know, everybody calmed me down. And then we just kept going, and it and and I had a, such a good time in editing because I wanted certain close-ups and which we didn't have, but they managed to bring the camera closer in the editing. So it was really magic. It was really magic. Well, why me. did you choose to film with one camera instead of a multi-camera oh, I shoot? I didn't choose this. This is Eric. I would never have chosen a <laughs> camera. I'm so, used to working with three to five cameras, you know. So, this, Eric, why did you choose one over a multi multi camera uh, shoot? So, I think we wanted to give the feeling of a person in the room with these two ladies experiencing the whole film, and really, that was something that was really important for me because in the play, you're sitting there and you feel like you're alone with them in the room. And I think also that's something that Tom also was really supportive of. Uh, Tom Maria's husband, he was such a great support throughout this whole film. And we really came to the decision that if we do two cameras, we would also have to do cuts there. And again, you people might think that there is also, it's not happening in real time. And we really wanted to keep that feeling that everything here is tempoed perfectly. And that was Maria's directing that she really knows how to tempo something and make everything move so beautifully, you know, and, and I really blessed to have her with us. Well, it, you know, it, the timing, and can see what I loved about this film too, is that it's only about an hour, 20 hour, 22 minutes long. So that plays into the fact of, you know, uh, mama getting up at 4 a.m., to prepare this apple pie for Dory's birthday. But then it coincides with the fact that when the apple pie is done, then, then we know that towards the end, it, it's basically getting to the very end of the film. And so to me, that was just pure magic to have this, I'd almost call the apple pie the central character here because it's actually creating the timing of the film and then to have this beautiful dialogue between Kay and Laurie. It is, like I said, it's one of the best films that I've seen in a while. And it's just pure, it's a pure joy to watch. I'm so glad you liked it. And I think people, people, I, I hope it goes far and, and people really get to see it because it was a labor of love for everybody involved and everybody I mean, there wasn't even one person we didn't like on the crew, the staff. The, I mean, everybody really got behind it. And uh, we, Eric and, and I created a, an environment with Tom that really made everybody feel included and loved. And, you know, and working with those two actresses, it took, oh, it took me, I can't, I must have seen 100 actresses before I got Kay. And I kept going, no, no, this isn't right. Remember that, Eric? And finally, yeah, yeah. finally, um, she walked in. And I went, ah, there, there she is. Yeah, I mean, a casting is really everything, you know. Casting and the writing and everything has to gel. Well, to when get I there. when I wanted to do the film, I told Maria I want two actresses, and it's the two actresses that were in the play because they did such a great job and they have that relationship. And Maria knows how to work with these two that it came out to be really 
exactly what I wanted. And that, that was the scariest moment of the whole filming of it. Yeah. Well, casting is everything. But it was funny because I talked when, when I asked Kay about it, she said, I just, you know, pulled my uh, Texan out of myself and went in there and, and, and did it as, as if she, of course, she's from originally from Dallas, but yeah, to, right. to, you know, to play the part of these two being in Abilene, Texas, she did it as she, both of them literally were perfectly cast for this. So I'm glad that when you made the film, you didn't change characters or you didn't change the casting. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And they were all glad. And, and we, we're going to, we're going to show it at the theater one day soon. You know. Well, it, it definitely deserves to be there. And I also noticed too, that with some of the camera work, uh, when the camera operator there was there was one scene where mama and dory or at the table they're preparing the apples and the camera shot is where he goes almost behind them and i yeah. and i kept watching very closely i'm like okay how far is the edge of the front of the set so how <laughs> large was this actual set because it was technically a working kitchen Oh, definitely. And um, our designer, Evan Bartoletti, we had done it in our smaller theater. And then when we wanted to do it for film, we did it in the larger. So he took the set and recreated it and made it even better in the larger theater with a, a way for the camera to travel. And it, it, it just, he's, a, he's quite a, a, a brilliant designer. And all of his details really add up. We, we love working with Evan. So well, it, what we did was also, sorry, Maria. Oh, well, go ahead. <laughs> sorry, no. So what we did was also that we um, we added corners, which was very important. So we added, so like that you feel like it's a closed room. Uh, so like that when we do that spin, you could see the corner of the film, uh, the, the corner of the room. Yeah. And that way you, you feel like it continues on. And that's also another thing that Evan did so, so greatly. So, okay. Now, because I know Kay brought it up. So was this, was this, was the interior basically based off of a, a mobile home? Yes. I mean, not, not a particular mobile home, but that's right. what it would look like. Yeah. Because you got, you have a, it's because you have, you only have so much width in a That's mobile right. home. Yeah. And of course the kitchen, the living room is, is it basically right there together. And yeah, so together. it, it made a perfect set. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's yes. and as, as you said, the kitchen, the kitchen was working. I had to crawl in that ceiling of the victory theater in order to connect the gas and go up to the roof with Tom, you know, banging and opening things, you know, but uh, yes, it was, it was also a working kitchen. <laughs> Well, the the overall story was perfect, beginning right. to end, and because Kay and Lori they they bring these characters to life, and as I was talking with them, I I learned that there is basically a little bit of a secret backstory to Dory, and uh -huh. I had picked it up twice in the dialogue. And so I asked them, I said, explain to me what the whole uh, sleeve situation is with Dory. Yeah. Then I got the backstory. Then it really, for me, because I'm probably one of the few that are going to even know that backstory, that it really brought even more depth uh, to their relationship. Sure. Oh, yeah. And they, they incorporated that into their acting, you know, the, could feel it when when you when you it was a play you could feel it and even in a movie there are hints and you go what's what's the you know and most people kind of figure it out yeah because if you watch the scene very very closely because now when i think back on it yeah. if you watch that scene very very closely you start to understand because yeah dory yeah down. dory's there you know peeling apples yeah. mama or she's basically peeling with a knife. Yeah. So, yeah. So she already has that thought when she looks yeah. over at Dory. And yeah. then as Dory's being the daughter, she's yeah. feeling guilt. 
shame, disappointing her mother. Oh, you're so a I, great audience. You really are. You really got the whole thing. I have to study these things. <laughs> well, you got it all. You know, you know yeah, Kay, I, I, Kay, yeah go ahead, yeah. Eric. No, what, what I like about this also is that there's a lot of um, moments in the, the film that are not said in the script itself. Also, Mama has stories, you know, about Dory that she hasn't told. And that is what brings in these real family moments because there's so many moments that in family that are not said or stories that we don't know and backstories that we don't talk about. And even though Mama does open a lot of skeletons, <laughs> she still take out all the skeletons that she could, which is really something that when you, when I watched it more than once, let's just say that way, I still find moments in the film that I'm like, oh, wait, that was written there. Oh, there's this. And that's really also. Well, well one of the little things that I noticed, and we talked about this, where Dory is peeling the apples. But there's this one slice where she just leaves this tiny sliver of peel. And I looked at that and I said, that scene is about to come back later. Yeah, Be that's right. <laughs> because I knew the, um, I knew how mama was reacting and reacting. Right. And then when the scene came back up, you know, she brought it to Dory's attention and Dory was basically like, you know what? So she just throws it in that bowl and says, well, I hope when when I did I get that piece with that apple because to me it was a message saying sometimes these little things in life don't matter. Yeah, they really don't. Yeah, that's yeah. great. And a tribute to our playwright and uh, who wrote the play and timed out the the he timed out the apple pie and you know baked it and timed it out to the play. I we didn't do that. He wrote that in. You know, so that was well, well Maria, were you an hour and twenty two minutes? <laughs> yeah. Well, Maria, how astonished were you the first time that uh when you did the actual play and that the apple pie actually timed out perfectly? Was that a shock to you? No, because he told me it was going to, and I thought, Oh well, okay, and it did every single time. Every single time. And the, the smell just drove the audience mad. So it was great. <laughs> you know, I, I still love that whole element. And uh, as I was talking to both of them, uh, what there, there, was, there, there was a funny scene. And Kay was kind of shocked that I, I noticed something that she didn't actually think about. And the scene where, and, and it's, tw it's basically in the first uh, portion of the okay. film where, where mama is basically, she's standing there in the kitchen and in front of the refrigerator and, and Dory's there. And she says, you know what? I, I haven't gone to the bathroom in three weeks. And, uh, and Dory's like, Oh, well, we need to take you to the doctor and check that out. She goes, no, 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 no. I, I you know, I'm, I haven't been eating that much, so it's no big deal. So I told Kay, I said, what I found so funny about that was, is that as the film moved along, there is this camera shot with Mama sitting at the table and right on the shelf behind her is an unopened, unwrapped container of Metamucil. And I told her, I said, was that done on purpose? And was that linked to what you had said in the first part of the film? Because I thought it was kind of funny because a lot of seniors, sometimes the remedy is actually in front of them at home but they don't pay attention to it. Yeah, that, that's Evan. Evan put that there. That's, <laughs> that's the kind of designer he is. He put it there unopened, all still wrapped. You know? So that's great. Uh, that's a wonderful thing that you, you picked up on that. Well, there, there was so many, well, like you had said earlier, and, and even they said it yesterday, the detail of the set was so amazing i mean even when one of them would walk to the refrigerator i'm studying the refrigerator door because i'm like <laughs> okay is there any hints on this door and there was and it's yes, that little was. blue piece of paper yeah that was great wasn't it that was really great yeah 
I think that's, that's I think a- one of the great moments of this film, or in general, that everything here is really thought out of because people were so professional. We really got the best people to do it. And you know, even with Maria's directing, every moment that somebody gets up, every every speaking, there's all a reason behind. And there's so many small Easter eggs, you know, in the writing itself, as you said, in the set, that you can really watch it and find moments, you know, why oh my, this is what's happening here. And it, it gives it gives the audience to think. Because in the beginning I told Maria, maybe we should Maybe we should go and zoom in on, on, on scratch marks here, you know, on uh, cuts in the, in the arm. And Maria said to me, no, no, we don't need to do that. The audience can figure things out for themselves. So, so we don't feed the audience with a spoon, but because we believe that the audience is smart and they can find the stuff for themselves so they can think, oh, wait, what was that story with Dory? Oh, wait, what was the story with Maria? You know, and yeah. And, yeah, because yeah, I think if I would have watched the film a, a second time, even a third time, I would have probably eventually figured out the whole Dory sleeve oh, thing. Yeah, but that was a brilliant move in the script. Yeah, it's a subliminal thing that takes you someplace. You don't and, even. And we, know ha- and we have to have those. We have to have those yeah. when it comes to a play or. Or a, film. a film because it's those little texture. things that cause that depth in the story. Yeah. Yeah. It's texture and detail that not everybody gets. Somebody gets one detail, somebody gets another, but it, it adds up to an experience that is real and realized, you know, for the audience. And that's, that's what's important. Well, Maria, for you as a director, how much directing did you actually have to do for the acting portions or were you more just staring at that monitor, making sure the camera was getting oh, it all? No, no, I wasn't staring at the monitor m- much. No, no, I'm, I'm really, I don't know. I, I, we had done the play, so we had worked together and we knew what we were after and we knew what changes we really wanted to make in the acting. And, um, I don't know. Um, I don't know how to answer that question. Well, well, let me, let me ask you this because, They've done these parts um, quite a few times. Yes. And I'm sure from the very beginning, you as well as the actors noticed the the gelling and the synergy of not only the story, but the dialogue coming together and becoming so conversational and so real. Yeah. And yeah. and then that just translated over to the film. Yeah. It just, we just brought the whole thing right on over. And um, with a, a couple of little changes, you know, that we always wanted to make. And, um, it, and it worked, you know. So uh, I really trusted the actors. I really trusted Eric. I absolutely trusted Naveed um, and Tom. And it, it just all worked out. No, I don't know how to say One it. One of Maria's <laughs> special skills is pacing. She uh, really knows, as a director, how to get that pacing to happen. And and I also studied acting with Maria, and she would have uh, what would you have a bell or something that you would you clicker. would like ring to make someone go faster? Yeah, a little clicker or a snore. And and that's one of Maria's as a director that I always appreciate with her. She knows how to get stuff moving. She knows how to get stop when it needs to be. And you really feel it through this film, all those moments. Yeah, they were built in. Relationships. It translated over. Right. Well, you, Maria, you did a stunning job on pacing. Thanks. I appreciate that. Because there's a lot of films this past season that are guilty of poor pacing where you, you have a great story (laughs) and then it lags and you're like, you could, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of like what, uh, what one critic said about, uh, killers of the flower moon. He goes, you know, you could have cut an hour out of that film and it's still been fine. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I understand. understand. (laughs) You know, so, but pacing's important and that's what I loved about pie in the sky from the very first moment to the very end, it flowed, it moved, 
It didn't lag. You were interested in every word that they were saying because the dialogue is the story. Yeah, that's true. And, so and I must also like give another, another compliment to Navid. Yes. Uh, because there's a lot of moments that, you, that the women sit and talk. And over there, it's very hard to do pacing or to make any kind of movement. And a week before the shoot, we would have just a camera standing still and watching these two women talk, which it was missing something. And I didn't know what. And I call Navid and I tell him, I don't know what to do. You know, please help me f figure something out. And that's where he came up with the idea of always giving the camera movement, which Paul, the camera guy who is holding it, poor, poor thing, now we tell him, now you have to always move. But that's really also what gives such a, a, um, an interesting impact to it because there's always movement in the film. Nothing ever stops. So even when the two women are stopping, the camera is moving and there's always something to look at. Well, let me ask you this. Does, all right. So then, all right, because what I'm thinking now is were the edit points made when the subject matter in the conversation changed? We, we had a... We had a few moments of why we decided to make those edit points. Uh, if it's the subject matter, if it's a, um, a relationship change between them. I also have to say that while we were filming it, it was watching. It was like watching live sports because the minute that something goes wrong, let's say we had a wrong pointing and we couldn't get it into the frame and we had to go half an hour backwards and do it all again. And even if a scene would feel like it went perfectly only because of that pointing or suddenly you see the outside of the set, we have to go back half an hour and do it again. And, and when I'm watching it, I was like, did we get it? Did you see that? No, we didn't see it. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Well, how many so, film days did it take to, to film it? Two. Two days? Yeah. 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 Two film days. Brilliant. Yeah. A lot of rehearsals. We did a lot of rehearsals on Zoom because we couldn't meet in person for a while. But uh, but yeah. yeah, and that's why we also had to have Navid in the earpiece for Paul, the, the camera guy, mm -hmm. um, to tell him uh, move to the left, move to the right, zoom in. So the whole time Paul is hearing this guy in his ear telling him how to move the camera because we couldn't get that many rehearsals um, in the pandemic. Yeah. yeah wow. So for those that have screened the film, what has been the reaction? Well, everybody seems to like it. <laughs> they seem to love it. Oh, Arizona, we did it in Arizona. The Toronto Film Festival loved it and gave us awards. And um, it's been everywhere in terms of festivals. So now yes. it's a matter of releasing it. And um, we've, we've won up to now 18 awards in 16 different festivals. Uh, whenever I go to a festival, people come to me and they say to me, oh, that reminded me of my mother. That reminded me of my grandmother. That reminded me of my father cooking with him. For me, it reminds me of my grandfather also and my grandmother who are very particular with, with the way when I help them out. No, you have to do this exactly right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and then we, I was so lucky because I went to the American film market to try to find a distributor as, as an indie filmmaker. It's very hard to find the right distributor for your film. And yeah. so many people make so many promises. And I think it was, I, I, what I did was I wrote everyone in the American film market an email. Nobody answered me, of course. So I would wait for someone to come out of, of a meeting. I would come in, I would say to them, I have a film for you. They say, well, is it an action? No. Is it a horror? No. Then we're not interested. So I would say, wait, wait, wait. It's about a mother and daughter baking an apple pie and the mother gives her daughter the recipe of life. And they would be like, okay, I'm actually interested in this. Come in. <laughs> and I got a meeting with each distributor and I was really lucky to find the right distributor, which is BMG, which uh, they make family films and, and I was, and they're doing a really wonderful job and you can right now watch the film in all the platforms possible you know amazon who uh, sorry not who amazon um hoopla um google play 
Apple TV. So they're really doing a great job on this. So everybody can see this even on streaming now? Yes, yes. Right now it's streaming and soon it's going to be an, uh, an AVOD, which is, uh, you know, I don't know yet which platform is going to be in the upcoming week. So stay tuned and we'll let you guys know. Oh, wow. I, ladies and gentlemen, this is a must see film. I mean, at the heart of this film, Pie in the Sky is Dory, a 65 year old woman and her vivacious 85 year old mother, Margaret goes by mama in the film and this film unfolds on a significant day dory's birthday as margaret decides to bake an apple pie using a treasured family recipe and through the simple act of baking margaret shares not only the secret to a perfect pie but also imparts the essence of a life well lived it's a narrative rich in love self-discovery and transformative power of family traditions Pie in the Sky is more than just a film. It's a celebration of togetherness, reflection, and the unspoken lessons learned in the warmth of a kitchen. It's a story that resonates with its audience, reminding us of all the priceless life lessons and unbreakable bonds that are often formed in the most ordinary of settings. So, Maria and Eric, I want to thank you so much for your time and sharing this incredible magnificent and brilliant film with us today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Pleasure. You're very welcome. And ladies and gentlemen, again, Pie in the Sky, it's streaming now. It's a must watch. Put it on your list. Share it with your friends because this is the film to see. It's heartwarming. It's funny. It's heartfelt. And you're just simply going to fall in love. And who knows, it may actually want to make you help you make an apple pie with someone you love in your family. So, ladies and gentlemen, you can catch all of the replays of our interviews with top film directors and producers, screenwriters and actors, and more on our website at bondoncinema.com. And we're also available on YouTube and a dozen audio platforms as well. So I want to thank you for watching and listening and as for me, I'll either see you at the movies or from the red carpet.